Appreciate everyone getting together here today. Um, I know Josh is on the call, so we'll get started now. Um, if you have a question, we're gonna to continue to use the chat function. Um, so put your name in the chat function and I'll call on you. Um, if you would, just mute your lines now, and then when I call on you, you can unmute them to ask the question. But um, we'll get started. Coach, are you there? Yes, Dave, I, I am. Hello, everyone. Excellent. Why don't you uh, just kind of give them a quick briefing on uh, how everything's been going since you guys actually got the news to return. Yeah, you know, I think uh, obviously uh, there's a lot of excitement around the building. Um, you know, I, I really uh, want to give a lot of credit and really applaud our kids because uh, even in this downtime uh, where we thought that the season was going to end up being played in the spring, um, you know, our kids never wavered. You know, we stayed here. We continued to practice, continue to work out. Uh, and, uh, you know, they kept a very positive attitude about things. And, uh, you know, a lot of programs across the country kind of sent guys home or, or kind of, you know, dismissed their team for free time. And our guys wanted to be here. They wanted to be around each other. Um, obviously, they believed in the uh, protocol that we were able to provide to, to keep them, you know, healthy and safe. Uh, and they just wanted to be with the team. And so, um, you know, we've been able to see, you know, just that time that we spent, even, you know, when we weren't uh, guaranteed a season this fall, uh, really be able to pay, pay off to the development uh, of our team overall. Our first question is from Aaron McMahon. Hey, Josh, thanks for taking the time to do this. I uh, wanted to ask about Nico Collins and what your understanding of his situation is and, and what has been your recruiting pitch to try and get him to, to play this fall? Uh, well, Nico's, you know, Nico's got a bright future in football. Obviously, he's going to play football uh, for a very long time, kind of moving forward uh, here. Um, and so, obviously, you know, a lot of our guys have been faced with some tough decisions to make that personally they need to make, uh, you know, for themselves. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's really uncertain times right now, you know, considering, you know, the season, you know, got uh, canceled and we got it back. Um, you know, there's a lot of different scenarios that end up playing out. And, and you know, for a seeable future right now, you know, we're guaranteed the season we have. And so, you know, I think individually, uh, you know, a lot of our guys have faced some tough decisions. And, you know, we're just here to support whatever decision they make, you know, and, and, and we're fully supportive, obviously, uh, the selling pitches, just being around the team, you know, being around the guys that you continue to uh, uh, to play for and, and believe in. And, and you know, uh, we've had a number of different guys, you know, make that choices. And, uh, you know, we're just we're excited about the opportunity we have. Our next question is from Orion. Hey, Josh, thanks for doing this. Um, to follow up on Aaron's question, have you had Nico in practice since the season was reinstated? Uh, Nico was here. Uh, he was here early on when we were doing things. And so, um, you know, obviously um, we kind of hit a, a pause there with a lot of our guys that were, you know, either draft eligible or seniors. Um, and so, you know, they had some time to really kind of reflect upon uh, whether or not, you know, they were going to potentially play in the spring season. And then obviously once we We've gotten that decision now. We've been able uh, to get back our team. And so uh, we're just focused right now on kind of trying to prepare for the first game. Obviously, Minnesota coming up with an in-conference opponent. And, um, you know, really been pleased, you know, with the progress and where we've been able to pick up, you know, since we've left off. Our next question is from Isaiah. Hey, Josh. Uh, just wondering, uh, with it being year two, what, what, is it, what is it like going into this particular, I guess you could say, fall camp? Uh, has, has it been easier for you, the players? And how much do you feel like they've been able to maybe pick up and just kind of run with things compared to last year? Yeah, I think, uh, I think it's been really easy for everyone. I, you know, and, I, and I give credit to, uh, to all of our players. I give credit to all of our coaches. I think uh, you know, one of the things that uh, through this offseason and through all the adversity, just being able to teach and learn um, you know, through Zoom. You know, and and that, was a, you know, that was a unique tool that you know, as coaches, I knew nothing about Zoom, Zoom last year. And now, you know, being able to spend the whole off season and really take it slow to teach, you know, our players and being able to see those guys learn as students because they had to take uh, a, a very professional approach to things, having to be, you know, prepare themselves mentally, even during the times that we weren't around to be able to prepare physically. And so um, you're starting to see that. You're starting to see that, that you know, that growth mindset and that growth uh, really display uh, on the field. And especially for a lot of young guys, I'll tell you, that's the biggest area of growth that we've been able to notice is our young guys are further along than they ever would be. And, and a lot of that is, you know, the credit to their maturity, but also being able to teach these guys via, you know, all different uh, forms of communication that we've been able to take advantage of. Our next question is from Raina. 
Uh, I had Josh. Uh, there was a lot of uh, hype going into last season, especially about what your offense would produce. How, much, how important is it to manage expectations uh, for the offense, especially with the new quarterback and the offensive line changing over and quite a few changes within the receiver core as well? Well, you know, I don't necessarily know is it about managing uh, expectations. It's more so about controlling the things that we can control. Um, you know, uh, it, with any job, there comes high expectations, and, and we have very high expectations of ourselves offensively. Uh, but the things that we can control are the things that haunted us early in the season last year, turnovers and mental mistakes. And so, you know, as long as we can focus on playing uh, the best possible football that we can play and playing it clean, you know, eliminating those turnovers, things that just give other teams opportunities, uh, then we'll be able to control what we can control and, and ultimately uh, get to playing the type of football that we want to play on offense here. Thanks. Our next question is from Adam Rittenberg. Hey, Josh, I just wondered what, you, what you've seen from Joe Milton and how he can impact your offense potentially in, in unique ways than we've seen in the past. Yeah, you know, Joe's um, – Joe's really, really, uh, if you said, who's probably one of the most improved players on the team, obviously, uh, you know, I, I would like to, you know, throw Joe in that mix. And I don't want to just say that from a physical standpoint, because when we're talking about improvement, improvement comes in a number of different ways, you know, leadership, um, you know, physically, and then obviously, um, you know, being able to, you know, to learn the offense. And, and um, Joe's been exceptional. You know, I, I really, you know, love our quarterback room, period. Not only Joe, but, uh, you know, even Kate McNamara has been playing unbelievable. Uh, but Joe's got a special talent. You know, he's a uh, he's a quarterback that's blessed with a tremendous skill set, um, you know, obviously with an arm and accuracy and just, you know, he has every throw in the back plus, you know, the extra club that you don't necessarily need to carry all the time. And so, um, you know, I just like to credit, you know, uh, Coach McDaniels and, and, you know, Coach Harbaugh and those guys developing, you know, that position because uh, that was a – I'll tell you, it was scary a little bit for us. Obviously, losing a quarterback, a starting quarterback, um, you know, uh, going into the offseason, I really challenged those guys saying, hey, we need someone to step up and show us that they can lead this team. Uh, and what we've seen so far with Kate and Joe, uh, both of those guys display a, a tremendous amount of uh, talent to be able to lead this team at the quarterback position. And, and obviously, uh, both guys are playing really well. Uh, but back to your specific question about Joe, it's just, you know, I think it's everything. I think it's him learning the offense. I think it's him taking control and, and command. Uh, and there's every day out there he makes some type of wild play. And, and those wild plays are not just wild plays in college football. They'd be wild plays on Sundays. And so, obviously, he's blessed with a tremendous talent uh, with arm strength. And, and obviously, he's very athletic. Um, as a quarterback can move in the pocket. And I think that's the biggest growth that he's shown is his pocket presence. As a bigger guy that stands six foot five, you know, he can see over top of things and he can stand in the pocket and really deliver throws on time. And so uh, really excited about the development in that room. Uh, and like I said, you know, I, I think between Coach McDaniels and Coach Harbaugh, both of those guys have really, uh, they, they've taken ownership and, and really placed an emphasis on developing those guys and we couldn't be more happy. Next question is from Corey. Right, thanks, Josh. And, um, just, to, just to piggyback off of Adam, do you see any difference in um, the play callings with Joe being at the helm and will it allow for any more downfield action? You know, we, we threw quite a bit of shots last year. You know, we're going to kind of run our offense and obviously build it around, you know, who we have at the quarterback's position as well as who we have at our skill position. Obviously, um, you know, we've got a number of different skill players that are going to be exciting ball in hand type of players. Uh, but we're going to be, you know, we're going to be well-rounded. You know, we're going to be, uh, we're going to have great balance kind of in what we do and who touches the ball. Uh, and that balance has obviously got to start up front in the run game. It's got to be able to disperse itself to the pass game. And so, um, you know, we'll, we'll, you know, we do everything. We do everything and anything. So, uh, you know, not to label us as one thing as a shot team or anything or give anything away, but uh, we'll have great balance in what we do. Our next question is from David Woodruff. Hey, Josh, this is David Woodruff. Uh, I wanted to ask specifically about the offensive line. Obviously, big news with Jalen Mayfield deciding to come back, but still a lot of new faces at that position group. What What has it kind of looked like at camp, and has anyone really been stepping up and uh, making an impact there in, uh, on the O-line? Yeah, that group is starting to kind of come together in my eyes. And although for a lot of people, they assume that it's new faces, but a lot of old heads, you know, a lot of guys that have been in the building, uh, you know, that have been around veteran type players. Uh, first and foremost, the guy that I think has done an exceptional job uh, leading, you know, our offensive line unit has been Andrew Fistardis. You know, he's a fifth year player, 
uh, who started off as a walk-on. And I can't say enough great things about V because, I, I, you know, uh, he's the guy that gets it going at the center position for us. Obviously, from a communication standpoint, making sure everybody's uh, on the same page. But then they're able to see his approach, you know. And, and he showed flashes at the end of games last year when we were able to get him in, obviously, uh, with some leads. And then uh, first Michigan State, he got in for a few plays when Caesar went down. Uh, but being able to replace your center is always an important piece. Uh, and uh, we feel like we've got a very important piece there with Andrew Stardis right there at our center piece. Obviously, he's uh, he, uh, you know, he's backed up and he's having some competition by uh, uh, by Carpenter. And you know, we want to keep developing that room even with Reese. But uh, specifically speaking about the other pieces on the offensive line, you know, you got a guy like Ryan Hayes who started games, uh, who's played in a number of different games for us. You know, Andrew Stuber, another veteran presence who's been here. You know, these guys are going into their third and fourth year into the program, so they're not your typical freshmen or first year players that you're looking to replace uh, a lot of your offensive linemen with. But, you know, obviously getting the great news uh, that uh, Jalen's coming back and, and, and you know, for Jalen, uh, being around the team was so important. There was a number of different key components that really led uh, to his decision, being around the team, wanting to, you know, get his degree, uh, but most importantly, he loves football. He, he, he wants to be an elite talent. He wants to be a first rounder. And so we feel really, really good about, you know, where we are now, as well as building depth, you know, seeing guys like uh, Chuck Filiaga step up right now, Carson Barnhart, you know, Trevor Keegan, just to name a few. So um, we feel very strong. Um, Trente Jones just had a great camp. You know, we feel very strong right now about the depth that we have now, obviously gaining Jalen back. Uh, but the pieces are starting to come together. You're seeing the chemistry, the camaraderie uh, really show itself. And that's the key piece whenever you're re replacing a whole line. It's it's not about how one individual can play. It's about how, how, all, how all five can play together. And, and so that's the biggest thing that we've been trying to uh, create is an atmosphere where they're playing closely uh, together and being able to be all on the same page. Our next question is from Ashley Baystock. Hey, Josh. Um, I wanted to ask about the freshman receivers, AJ and Roman. Just what have you seen from them so far, and how do you expect that they will fit into your offense? Well, the first thing you see is speed. You know, uh, those guys are, are uh, you know, they immediately step on that field. Uh, they make our team faster. They make the game faster. Uh, they're just exceptional football players. Uh, you know, very smart, uh, very athletic. Uh, they both have great ball skills. Uh, they've made some big time plays throughout camp for us. Now, um, obviously, you know, we don't have the full pads on yet. So we're going to start to see how we can develop the physical part of it with the physicality that comes with it. And I would say that's even our biggest challenge up front right now. Okay, is now once, you know, September 30th comes around and we can put the shoulder pads on, how physical can we get? There's one thing to be mentally sharp, you know, or be in great physical condition, but the game has got to be played from a physical standpoint. And so been really, really uh, impressed with those two guys. I mean, I, I think the level they're at right now as freshmen is probably uh, as high as any freshman that I've ever been around. And so they're going to play for us. They're going to play. They're going to play a lot of football for Michigan, and they're going to make some plays for us. And, you know, we're excited. And I, and I really love the receiver room, you know, the speed and athleticism that we have in that room and the competition that's growing. Uh, it's special to see. And so I, I know our quarterbacks are enjoying it now as just as well as they're enjoying the way our quarterbacks are playing. And then one quick question about Joe. I know last year, you know, you, him, talked so much about improving his touch so that every throw isn't a line drive. I'm just wondering how that's gone this offseason and how you've seen that improve. Well, everyone's got all five fingers, so there's no fingers getting jammed out there, no one losing anything. And so, uh, you know, that's been really well. You know, his accuracy has been um, exceptional. And that was one of the things we have talked about, um, you know, as far as taking RPMs off things, you know, knowing – you know, how to give a, a catchable ball. And that was never, uh, you know, accuracy as far as ball placement was never an issue. Sometimes the issue had been in the past is whether or not, you know, those receivers could catch it that fast. And so um, he's done a really good job improving in that, but still maintaining, you know, his power in his arm. I think, uh, you know, I think so far uh, he's thrown three balls quite at 70 yards out there. And, you know, so when you see a ball travel like that, 70 yards, it's very hard to track a ball that long. And it's been pinpoint accuracy on each one of the throws, you know, um, where I've gotten to the point now I've told the receivers don't stop running, you know, and, and Kate has done an exceptional job as well, making some of those wild throws. And so that's one of the things that Coach McDaniels um, tracks each and every day is how many wild throws that our guys are making. And right now those two guys are, are, are right at each other with making wild throws that, you know, have been exceptional throughout camp. 
Our next question is from Jamal. You know, Josh, you already touched on some of what I was going to ask. I had some offensive line questions as well. So I'll try to pivot a little bit here. Um, I know that you mentioned that these are old heads returning who might not have the starting experience, but they are experienced bodies. But you also mentioned how the lack of, I apologize. <laughs> That's all right. You, uh, you also mentioned how the lack of physicality can come into play because you guys haven't had much time to work on that. Are you at all concerned about getting your offensive line up to speed with reps together and being a physical bunch? Does that affect your play calling at all? Well, you know, I, I think that's going to be the emphasis once September 30th hits and they allow us to, to get the physical contact. You know, it's going to be about how physical can we become, you know, as a football team. And I think right now, um, you know, I think there's concerns overall in football because of all the time that we've missed. Um, you know, you've seen, you know, throughout the NFL this past week, there was a rash of, you know, some pretty bad injuries, you know, because a lot of people had missed this all this contact time. And, and you know, initially, I think we all thought as coaches that we didn't need the training camp. You know, we didn't need the spring football. Um, but that's starting to kind of be proven wrong, that you need that that physicality early on to kind of to provide that callus on the body, you know, to be able to withstand some of the physicality that's in this game. And so uh, when September 30th hits, that's going to be a major emphasis. Obviously, up until this point, it's about the mental edge. It's about the footwork. It's about the hand placement, uh, the fine details. Uh, but when we can get the pads on, we've got to make sure that we get our guys ready uh, for game one. And that's not just offensive line. That's even our running backs. You know, when you look at, you know, what were one of the key issues that we experienced last year offensively was fumbling the football. So we've got to make sure our backs, you know, are getting hit in practice. They're getting thudded up. You know, they're getting taken to the ground. So the first time we get touched in the game, you know, we just don't respond, you know, in a negative way that we can, uh, you know, we can respond in a positive way with power uh, and be able to play with a physical presence. Our next question is from Aria. Josh, um, what have you seen from Giles Jackson so far this fall, and what role do you expect him to play in your offense? You know, Giles obviously displayed, uh, you know, a, a unique ability to, as a touch player last year. You know, whether it was punt, whether it was kick returns, whether it was uh, specific touch plays. Um, you know, when you talk about, you know, being able to difference in this virtual world now is Giles came in last year as a true freshman. Uh, and really didn't get a chance to really grasp the offense till about week five. Uh, early in the season, you know, I had a lot of doubts about Giles. I was We're actually the scout team after uh, this. This early on in our this season. Uh, I guess and, uh, probably a nicer word than Clark can't help me to be disrespectful. Gone. Oh, sorry. Uh, but uh, Giles was on the scout team early in our season because it took him a little while to learn it. And then, you know, I didn't think he was going to make the impact on our team uh, at that point last year until about week five. And then probably from week five on, it was trying to figure out how many ways a game that he could touch a ball uh, because he had the ability to be such an explosive player. And so now this offseason is about being about how we can make him a complete receiver, which he's really, you know, accepted the role and accepted the responsibility. He's made some, you know, some really unique big time plays for us, has had a great practice yesterday, probably coming off his best practice ever here. Uh, yesterday, uh, probably caught, you know, I can't even tell you how many, how many catches he had, but uh, it was a you know, high number. Um, but it's just about becoming a complete receiver. You know, he was a high school running back. Um, he's obviously fast. He's obviously great with the ball in hands. But now, how can you create separation as a route runner? And a lot of the things that we did with him last year was find quick ways to put the ball in his hands. Now we're finding all kinds of ways to put the ball in his hands. So we're really excited about Giles. Um, you know, he brings a skill set to our team of an explosive nature. A uh, number of different guys do in that room. And most importantly, they've been able to provide leadership and, and really create an environment where it, it, it's competitive for those receivers. Our next question is from Angelique. Josh, I wanted to clarify a couple of things. With Jalen Mayfield, has he been cleared to practice? And where did, what, what is his status right now? Yeah, I think um, I think the status is getting clear uh, clear as far as practice or competition. Competition, obviously, that's going to be a different process as far as that. Uh, but uh, practice for our guys, obviously, we just had to get all of our new guys tested. Obviously, go through our testing protocols to make sure um, you know make sure they're they're healthy and safe. And then, obviously, as we reintroduce those guys back to the team, we've got to make sure they're in a level of condition that's going to be able to help them go out there and, and have success. And so. Uh, we're just getting our testing results back for the week right now as we start getting these guys back acclimated into practice, which will be today. And if I could also ask you about, to clarify, 
I, I was trying to read the tea leaves on, on Nico. Do you, do you think he's coming back or have you had conversations with him recently about what he intends to do? Yeah, we've had some conversation. Um, you know, we've had a ton of conversation. Obviously, I, I, I'm, you know, very respectful of anyone's personal decisions. I'm going to leave that to Nico uh, to be able to, to make, um, uh, whenever he's comfortable making an announcement. Um, you know, what we've done nothing but uh, support him 100%. And obviously, the same way we support him, the same way we support all our players here. Um, and, uh, you know, I think eventually, you know, everyone will be hearing from him. Next question is from Zach Shaw. Hey, Josh, uh, you have two running backs you didn't get to work with last year and, and Chris and Blake. I'm, I'm curious what your impressions of them so far have been and, and what kind of role. They both seem like kind of dynamic, versatile guys if they need to be. What kind of role you see for them this fall? Yeah, Chris has been everything is advertised, you know, from a skill set standpoint. Obviously, um, you know, he, he's a very, very smart football player, just a quiet leader, um, very professional. Um, you know, there's times out there where he surprises me and there's times out there I got to remind myself, okay, this guy's played football for five years. Okay, whether it's a blitz pickup or whether it's some little nuances or a route creating separation, he's played a lot of football. And so, uh, you know, he's what you expect a senior running back to look like and act like and approach uh, each and every day. And has done an amazing job learning the offense because he had to start from scratch. You know, he wasn't around at any point last year. We had very little conversation with him or last year, but, um, you know, we didn't know necessarily if he was going to come back, you know, if he'd make it through adversity. And I think that's a credit to him and his character uh, that for a lot of guys his age, uh, they'd go through the blame game, you know, where they're blaming everyone else except for themselves. And, and for Chris, he accepted his, 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 uh, his punishment, he accepted his roles and responsibilities and really responded in such a positive way. So I've uh, been very, very pleased uh, at Chris. He's going to make a number of different plays for us this year. Uh, and really excited about his future uh, moving forward as a football player. Um, Blake, uh, Blake is is just a phenomenal worker. When you talk about that running back room, I think the work ethic in that room really stands out. You know, guys that come in every day. You know, whether they're sitting in Coach Jay's office getting extra meetings, or you know, they're always in the weight room. You know, Blake's a Blake's a worker. You know, I looked on his on his social media page the other night. You know, he's at 9:30 at night. Uh, out on the track running like you know that's the type of players that we're talking about guys that are committed uh, to developing themselves to be the best possible player that they can be uh, Blake brings an explosive element to our offense at the running back position he is fast uh, you know obviously that's one of the greatest skill sets people see early on um, but he's so balanced you know he's, he's got you know he's another guy that can run routes like Chris Evans he's got great ball skills uh, he's pretty stout uh, really excited about that running back room and the depth that we have and so um, you know, we got to figure out how to put all the pieces together. Obviously, there's a ton of pieces sometimes with, with, uh, with all the different personnel packages you have that can create a problem. Uh, but that's our job to kind of put the pieces all together and, and get them all involved. Our next question is from Isaiah. Uh, Mike, Mike Sanders still and uh, Cornelius Johnson, how have you seen them improve now that they've got a year under their belt? And what – what do they need to do to impact the offense? Oh, those guys are going to have great years. I'm really excited about Mikey and CJ. And, you know, those guys were uh, – it's unfortunate because they were talented enough to be on the field even last year. Um, all, although they, they both made plays as true freshmen and played uh, as true freshmen. Uh, it was just the numbers game of how many guys that we were getting involved in the offense last year. And so, you know, they, they gained some valuable experience, obviously – uh, playing in-game action, uh, but then being able to see, you know, everything just translate over. There's always a jump from year one to year two. And to see those guys make that jump now this offseason um, from a skill standpoint has been has been really impressive. And so, you know, those guys are, you know, those guys are going to have a, a big-time impact on the offense. They're making a ton of plays. They're so technique and fundamentally sound. And that's the thing that stands out about Mikey and CJ is the technique and fundamentals that they play with, you know, and, you know, both of them are blessed with a tremendous skill set. Um, so, you know, I feel great. Uh, I think where we are, I, you know, I, I don't want to jinx us by any means, but where we are in that receiver room right now, um, I think is impressive. Uh, it's one of the most impressive rooms that I've been around from an overall depth and skill standpoint. Uh, and I didn't feel this way last year. I didn't feel this way. I thought there was room for growth and development. Um, you know, when I got here and now we, uh, we've obviously have got to be able to, to turn this potential into production 
uh, and be able to display it on Saturdays and not just, you know, over here at uh, Schoenbeckler Hall. Next question is from Ryan. Hey, Josh, with the uh, NCAA recruiting dead period extended through, uh, through January or through December, what, what challenges does that present for, for you and in, in the staff? You know, it's a great question. I think there's a ton of challenges. Um, you know, uh, rightfully so. I don't know uh, if anyone across the country agrees with the decision, but, you know, we understand it uh, in these tough times of a pandemic. Uh, but, you know, we have, a, we have a signing day in December. Um, so you're forcing a lot of kids uh, to make decisions right now without stepping foot on a college campus. And although they may come visit a college, uh, they don't get the day-to-day -day or the, the in-person uh, interaction with coaches and players that they possibly could. And obviously here uh, at the University of Michigan, we're such a national brand. You know, we got, we, you know, last year we signed guys from, you know, from uh, Hawaii to California to, you know, you name it. You know, so we recruit so, uh, nationally. And so, you know, for a lot of these young men that we're recruiting right now, you know, they haven't been able to come see campus. And so not only is it taken away from the evaluation process of us going out on Friday nights watching, you know, whether it's 2022s uh, or even our 2021 class play football and being able to see those guys and eye those guys in person, um, we're also losing the, the personal interaction of getting those guys to, to campus. And so I think it's very, um, it's very challenging. I think it's going to be even challenging on the 22 class uh, because we've lost so many in-person evaluations. And, you know, just rewind, we didn't get a chance to go out this spring and evaluate players. And so um, you've really got to rely on every bit of information as far as tape, you know, doing as many um, game breakdowns and make sure you know who you're getting. Uh, but from the recruiting side of it, you also got to be able to show these families who you are you know, virtually. And so you've really got to make sure you develop, you know, those relationships, you know, during this time. And just another quick question. Uh, obviously, some of these factors are out of your guys' control, but how confident are you in, in the Big Ten being able to play a nine-game season in, in nine weeks? Well, you know, I, I think, you know, um, whether or not we all like the decision or not, I think the emphasis on player safety uh, is something that we can all respect. Uh, and when there was doubt over player safety and the, and the, and the welfare of all players, uh, there was a pause. And so the number one thing that uh, we can all trust is that the protocols and, and interest is about player safety. So uh, I've got a high level of, of uh, comfort and confidence um, that we'll be able to play all nine games. You know, um, you know, there's obviously, you know, daily testing and other different protocols that the Big Ten has placed. And we've been the most um, – uh, I would say, you know, uh, been the most, um, you know, the conference that has placed the, the most protocols out there. You know, and so when you talk about putting a focus on player safety, the things that we're asking, you know, our teams, you know, whether it's the 21 day back to return policy or, you know, the daily testing, no conference is laying out the protocols that we're doing. And so, uh, you know, I think that's a credit to the Big Ten that we're standing out at the forefront saying that, you know, player safety is the most important issue that, that we can confront rather than playing games. You know, you're seeing a, not, a lot of games getting canceled right now co across college football uh, because they can. You know, teams are, you know, canceling games for whatever reason. Uh, but in the Big Ten, we want to make sure we provide a safe and, uh, safe and, and um, uh, uh, healthy way to be able to get back to playing football. Um, just before we go on to the next question, I wanted to let everyone know we're shutting off the questions because we got quite a few in here, and I know Josh has some things to do, but um, we got about eight left, eight questions in the queue. So the next one's from Rainer. Yeah, uh, Josh, how, how important is Ronnie Bell in the equation this year, especially with, uh, you know, kind of a new quarterback coming in and, you know, just to have an experienced receiver who's, uh, you know, proven to be fairly reliable, you know, throughout his, uh, throughout his career? You know, I think bringing that comfort level, you know, just, uh, you know, and the leadership. And, and Ronnie's a guy that he sets the tone in practice because, he, he you know, he practices so hard. Um, you know, just being able to have a guy that, you know, has played a ton of football, um, he understands things. And, and Ronnie's motivated. Even though, you know, for what a lot of people um, view as success for Ronnie last year, uh, Ronnie believes and he knows that last year uh, it was just scratching the surface. Um, you know, there was opportunities to eat, be even better. And so now it's about how we can take his game from one year and, and develop it, you know, the next year and make it even better. And so uh, just being able to have him around in that room and that veteran leadership, as well as his playmaking ability, you know, he's another guy that, 
uh, you know, that's created a ton of explosive plays for us with ball in hand type plays. And so, you know, we're really excited about, you know, being able to, to, uh, to uh, take his game, you know, and, and make that jump, you know, as a second year player, because he didn't play a lot of football his first year, you know, and so, you know, now getting more comfortable being a receiver, uh, being able to develop him has been fun. And uh, um, just to follow up, I mean, what what is um, what was your impression of uh, the, the decision by Dylan to kind of uh, leave the program, explore, uh, I guess, his options uh, after the, the quarterback race kind of, you know, uh, played out the way it did? Uh, no impression at all. We support all of our players and support uh, whatever decision they make. Um, you know, obviously, you know, focusing on the guys that we have on our roster, but, you know, um, we love and support Dylan, you know, and so uh, we have we've had no uh, impression at all. Um, every you know young man's got a decision they got to make during these hard times, and so um, we get it. You know, there's challenging times in this pandemic. Uh, it's our job as coaches to fully support them 100% in in whatever they choose. And so uh, just the same with Dylan or Nico or whoever it may be, um, we we fully support you know Jalen. You know, we fully support him. You know, and and um, you know we've had we've had guys out there. You know, and so it. Uh, it's uh, it just part of this time that we're in right now. Thanks. Next question is from Ryan. Hey, Josh. Uh, do you guys expect to name a starting quarterback before the opener, or, or is this something that could draw out a bit? You know, that, that's uh, uh, that's a little bit over uh, my my uh, my head on that one because uh, that's not uh, that's Coach Harbaugh's decision. Um, you know, I think our competition is, is going really well, and and. You know, we're, we're keeping our quarterback competition going. Um, and, and so, you know, uh, you know, we haven't really named starters uh, in our building yet. You know, I can't tell you who's going to go out there and start at receiver um, as we continue to, uh, uh, to really get into what we're going to now consider our, our start of our training camp, which will be uh, September 30th. So there's still a, a lot of days left before we kind of kick off. Uh, I know we're excited about the first game, but we've got to constantly remind ourselves the first game is over a month away. And so... Um, we've got a lot of time to continue to develop these players, keep bringing them along. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's across the board. I don't think we'll name any starters uh, up until the game. Next question is from David Woodruff. Hey, Josh, I know you spoke to this a little bit at the very beginning of this call as far as all the guys wanting to be around the program, even when football was up in the air. But I'm sure it was also a pretty big moment when the Big Ten did announce that uh, football was going to be played. Can you kind of speak to what the locker room was like when that news broke and what, and if the atmosphere has at all changed since that announcement came out? Yeah, that, that was, um, that's probably one of the hardest times you can kind of go through as a coach. Um, you know, there was obviously whispers heading into the weekend and, you know, you obviously try to put a lot of those whispers out and rumors out of the, uh, out of your head. And then when the decision was made, you know, we had a team meeting outside uh, because we can only meet outside and uh, you just saw the, 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 you know, saw, you saw the pain, you saw the, you know, the disappointment, you know, players emotionally. And, and you know, we felt helpless as coaches because a lot of times with, with our young men, you, know, you got to remind yourselves, you know, we're dealing with 18 and 19 year old kids. They're young men, you know, that they're in college, but, you know, they're still kids, you know, and so, you know, they're very, you know, attached emotionally with decisions you know, whether that's independent decisions in their life or with their families. And so when we, when, when, when the decision was made and to see the hurt and some of the pain that went through some of those guys uh, and not being able to comfort them because we didn't have an answer, you know, it was, we didn't have a lot of information at the time to be able uh, to console them. Um, we can only feel their pain and, and, and share their pain of, of disappointment. And so that was very hard and challenging as a coach, but, you know, I think um, they did a tremendous job leaning on each other. Um, you know, following Coach Harbaugh's positive uh, mindset and leadership. And I think that was the biggest thing because we could have, you know, we could have we went in a tank, you know. For a lot of people, when you face adversity, you just tank it, you know. And, and you know, Coach Stuber in front of the team, he, he displayed tremendous leadership, tremendous faith. You know, he said, we're not going to stop at what we're doing. Uh, it was kind of the scene off of, um, uh, um, gosh, Lee, I can't think of the movie where you can't get the guy out, the, the investment, uh, uh, Wall Street movie, was, uh, where he says, he's not taking me out, you know, he's not leaving. And, you know, it was kind of one of those deals where we weren't going anywhere. And so, uh, you know, it was, um, it, it was an impressive leadership, you know, from Coach Harbaugh, and it really played off uh, for our players uh, because they followed path. The Wolf of Wall Street, sorry, brain freeze there, yeah. 
Next question is from Aaron McMahon. Josh, on Joe Milton, proof pocket presence that you mentioned earlier, I'm wondering if that is, is, is that a product of him just being in the program last year, or did he do something different in the offseason that kind of um, you know prompted him to kind of to improve that area? Well, Joe's done a ton in the offseason. You know, you've seen the videos of him working out, you know, um, you know, with different people, whether it's Devin Gardner or, you know, working out back at his own uh, in his hometown with his high school coach. Um, that's just a commitment to getting better. Um, you know, he spent some time. Uh, you know, watching professional quarterback workouts, you know, um, you know, using all different avenues and everything. And so I just think, you know, just to, to increase focus on the daily uh, footwork and fundamentals that they just, that they work on in Indy. You know, when you look at our quarterback, Indy, it's, it's exceptional, you know, watching those guys go through Indy with, uh, with Coach McDaniels and taking the coaching points and stuff like that. And so um, just to really credit, like I said, to everyone involved, um, just being able to see, you know, his, uh, you know, see him mature and, and really, you know, um, being able to take the things that were perceived as negatives uh, and turn them into positives. Our next question is from Theo. Hi, hey Josh. Just kind of going off of uh, Aaron's question, Joe's talked in the past about needing to uh, improve his ability to, to read a defense. How has he gone about doing that, uh, you know, over the past year or two? He's done, he's done a great job. Just, you know, kind of developing, you know, all our quarterbacks, you know, the way we teach them, conceptually, not just about the offense, but about what they're seeing, you know, leverage of defender to give little small indicators of, of coverage, you know, um, you know, whether it's a boundary safety, field corner, we've got a lot of different things that we do offensively in the past game, whether it's based on coverage reads or advancement reads, okay, or, or progression reads, things that maybe go one to two to three. Um, we've got a number of different ways that we call things. And so uh, it's very important for our quarterbacks to understand the big picture. Um, they've got to be able to understand coverages, um, and, you know, that also plays a part in our protection game because our quarterbacks are now being involved in the protection game where it's something that we've taken and grown uh, because we didn't ask our quarterbacks to be involved with protection pickups uh, in the past. And just so, you know, their overall learning of the system, uh, like I said, you know, spending all the time on Zoom, being able to teach slow. One of the things when you have spring football uh, and you have training camp, you know, you're always teaching fast because you got to get ready for the next day. Well, you know, we went through six months where we didn't have anything to get ready for. And so we were really able to take our time and take advantage of all the, the things that we that we had in front of us um, and really use them to our advantage. And then just to follow up on that, earlier you mentioned uh, some of the, the wild plays that Joe's been making in practice. What have some of those plays been that have stood out to you? I mean, there's a number of different, you know, throws. And, you know, um, you know really, you know, uh, Kate and Joe, you know, they both – um, had some big time throws yesterday, but you know whether it's guys in their face, you know throwing shot plays down the field. Um, there's been some balls where you know if you're coaching on the defensive side, uh, you pretty much say, hey, there's nothing you can do to defend that, you know, because the ball placement is in the right place at the right time, throwing over top of defenders, whether it's on deep shots or intermediate throws. And so, um, you know, they they've uh, you know they've done an exceptional job, you know, making those wild throws, and then. You know, all of our skill guys have done exceptional jobs finishing the plays. You know, I think, you know, when we talked about a number of different receivers, but a guy that I'll, I'll come out and mention uh, who's having an exceptional camp is a guy named Eric Alt, you know, who's going to be a special talent at tight end. And when you've got Eric and you've got Nick and, and you know, you've got Scooney and, and Ben in that room, you know, our tight end room has is, is, is been exceptional this camp. And so um, we're just excited about those guys as we are about, you know, all of our receiving core and those guys all together. Uh, have formed to be to have pretty really good chemistry uh, and make some big plays for us. Next question is from Adam Rittenberg. Yeah, Josh, given where you've been, you know what it takes to have an offense compete at the national level. What are the two or three biggest things? I can sense your excitement, but what are the two or three, three biggest things that Michigan has to do offensively to get to that level in your mind? Yeah, the three things that you know was the all season focus for us is is first and foremost. Uh, we've got to uh, we've got to eliminate the turnovers, okay? Whether that's you know we did a pretty good job as far as an interception uh, ratio last year, but obviously our our our, you know, our biggest uh, obstacle early on in the year was fumbling the football. Um, so we've got to clean that first and foremost up. But then from there, okay, uh, we've got to create more explosive plays in the run game. You know we did a really good job last year creating explosive plays in the pass game, um, missed some even bigger explosive plays in the pass game, which I'll hit to next. Uh, but we've got we've to create explosive runs. 
you know, and that comes from obviously growth of our running backs as well as growth of our offensive line, you know, being able to, to, to you know, um, have some guys that can be some home run hitters and hit the right hole, block the right picture uh, and move people. Uh, but then third thing, uh, and I say we got we to gotta improve our completion percentage. Uh, and that's going to help us in a number of different ways. Our completion percentage wasn't good enough where we wanted it last year. Uh, and that was a combination of, of a number of different things, uh, whether it was uh, accuracy and off-target throws, uh, as well as drops, uh, which was extremely high for us last year. You know, we missed a number of different plays last year uh, with drops in the receiver room, you know, some, some plays that would have been, you know, explosive plays were right off the fingertips. And so uh, the focus on uh, improving the turnover ratio, uh, and winning the turnover battle and, and not giving the ball back to the defense and improving our explosive runs and then improving our, our, our uh, completion percentage has been the, the, the biggest three things uh, that we need to focus on offensively to take it to the next level. So our second to last question is from Austin Meek. Hey, Josh, thanks for doing this. Uh, when we talked to you last, I think it was over the summer, uh, it sounded like your three quarterbacks, you felt like all were pretty much on even footing. Uh, when did you start to see some separation with Joe? And also, what, what was he able to do to demonstrate leadership at a time when you weren't able to do a lot of the things you typically would be doing in the offseason? I apologize. There goes this motion again. Okay, sorry. They haven't quite <laughs> got me a light that just stays on, you know. Uh, so I don't spend much time in my office. I'm more so next door in the offensive staff room. Um, so uh, to answer your question, um, if I could picture frame our quarterbacks, okay, uh, and take a snapshot of where they were last year, um, I've seen that room take the next step and create separation. And they separated from themselves of who they were. Not individually uh, as far as one guy is doing this or that, uh, but they, they've separated from who they used to be. And when you can see that growth all together, uh, Joe being a much better player than he was last year, Cade being a much better player than he was last year, Dylan being a much better player than he was last year. When you have that type of growth and that type of separation, it ultimately pulls the room along. And so um, I, I'm just so pleased with where we are. You know, obviously now we're, we're faced with being a little thin, you know, obviously losing, uh, losing Dylan. Um, you know, uh, but we feel great about uh, Joe and we feel great about Cade. Uh, either one of those guys could go out and lead our team and lead our offense uh, to win from Saturdays. Yeah. Was there anything specific that Joe was able to do from a leadership standpoint, given that, you know, you weren't able to do all the typical team building stuff that you would be doing in the offseason? Yeah, well, you know what? Coach Herbert uh, broke the team down into seven groups this offseason. Um, he had small mini groups. Uh, and none of our quarterbacks uh, were the head of a mini group. Uh, they were co-captains of groups. Uh, and so we've put those guys in position to where they had to develop leadership. Uh, and leadership doesn't necessarily come with who, named, who is named the starting quarterback. We wanted to make sure that they competed uh, amongst the groups and really got the buy-in of the team that they could display their own leadership. And so, um, you know, just a uh, credit to those guys of just understanding leadership. And then on our offensive leadership council, I had all three guys on my offensive leadership council. So meeting with those guys, you know, uh, weekly in the off season, as well as uh, there was 13 total uh, players on the offensive leadership council. Uh, but, you know, really emphasizing that, you know, that leadership council was consisted of a lot more, a lot of guys who have played football, trying to increase their leadership, you know, whether it be Ronnie Bell or whether it was a Nico Collins or, you know, whether it was a Zach Charbonnet, increasing the overall leadership from guys that, you know, contribute to us on Saturdays uh, was a major focus. But, you know, Joe and uh, Joe and Cade did an exceptional job. You know, um, they're, they're both very mature in the way they approach things. They're both very smart from a football standpoint. Uh, and to see those guys, you know, um, take their leadership to the next level, it was about gaining the trust of the other. OK, having the other 10 believe in the one so you can play together as an 11 unit. OK. Our last question is from Angelique. Josh, you spoke a lot about Chris Evans. Where, where, how has uh, Charbonnet and, and even Hassan, how have they improved in this offseason, this long offseason? Yeah, you know, Zach's, uh, you know, I think Zach is, is playing at, a, at a such a high level. It, it's great to see Zach out there, you know, being who he is. You know, I think, um, you know, I think everyone knows, uh, you know, Zach's, uh, you know, he's tough. You know, he battled through some, uh, some injuries in high school. He came in a little banged up, needed to get cleaned up. 
Uh, and then he battled through a number of different injuries last year. Uh, and to see a guy that was, you know, uh, a true freshman, you know, kind of battle through, you know, adversity and injuries uh, and still play the full season uh, says a lot. But then he's been able to spend this off season on focusing on his body. And, and you know, first and foremost, you know, the dude is chiseled uh, as can be. I mean, he just takes such great shape of his body. Uh, and, and it's really impressive. He's always in the weight room. Uh, kind of reminds me of myself, uh, which is a joke. But, uh, um, you know, he's just, um, you know, he, he, he's, he's so mature about his approach and his preparation. Um, you know, to, to get his body feeling the best that he can be and playing at the highest level. And now that he's feeling great, now he reminds you of the player that, you know, he was in high school and, and such a great player. And so um, just even going into year two, just having a better feel for the run schemes, um, having a better feel for everything, um, he's been impressive out there. He looks like a totally different player, uh, and everyone's going to see an even better player than what you saw last year. Um, same with Hassan. You know, Hassan was another guy that, you know, going into the season last year, um, you know, he faced adversity. Um, you know, everyone saw Hassan come on. I think the Illinois game last year, probably game five. Uh, but leading up to that, you know, he was dinged up. You know, he wasn't available. You know, Hassan played very little football in our first four games um, because he was dealing with injuries and adversity. And so, you know, you saw a room that was completely new last year have to learn a new offense, have to get first time playing time, but also everyone in that room had to face adversity. And so, you know, Coach Jay did a tremendous job bringing those guys along. You know, we weren't quite pleased with where they were to start the season. But when you look at that room at where we finished the season, uh, I felt great about our running back room. And they've been able to pick up from where they left off uh, and really take care of their bodies individually. And so we're very, very pleased um, with having, you know, the room that we have at that running back position. Josh, before you mute, mutes me one more time, I, I wanted to ask you a little bit more specifically about Cade. I mean, completely different quarterback, it seems, from Joe, and how that changes play calls, and, and how would you describe him? Is he more of a game manager type of quarterback? No, nah, we don't play with a game manager. <laughs> so we play with, with true quarterbacks. Got to be able to score with the football. Uh, nothing's different about either one of them. Um, nothing's different at all. The game will never be called different. Um, there's not a different offense that we run, you know, for any of our quarterbacks. You know, we ask those guys to, to perform all the same task at hand. Uh, and first and foremost, things that you got to be as a quarterback, you know, you got to be smart with your decision making and you got to be accurate and good with your arm. You know, that's what a quarterback is. And so, um, you know, both of our quarterbacks have displayed that tremendous talent um, to be able to make great decisions, to be accurate and have great arms and to be able to play on time with their footwork. And so, um, they've done an exceptional job, uh, you know, uh, bringing each other along. Um, Cade's made, like I said, he's made as many big-time throws as Joe, probably not the same number, um, but there's some wild plays. Uh, and one of the things that, you know, really stands out about Cade is he knows how to be able to anticipate throws and play on time. And so when you're playing in sync and that rhythm, and, and, and I'll tell you, the first four days that we came back, and I think Cade will appreciate this, uh, the first four days that we came back, Cade was in a little bit of a funk. And, you know, he wasn't quite uh, – he was kind of more so in freshman mode where, you know, he was used to being on the scout team last year and not necessarily getting a lot of the, the full speed reps. Uh, it took him, you know, four or five days. And then literally about day five, um, I saw him make a throw in practice. And when he hit it, he kind of nodded his head three times like he was playing a song in his head. And ever since then, uh, he's been on fire. Uh, and so he's gained that mental confidence that he's needed to make, you know, jumping from his redshirt year to being a redshirt freshman. Uh, because your redshirt year, he didn't get a lot of team reps. You know, he was throwing for the defense on scout team. And so, you know, going through the operation of the offense has been completely new now this camp, you know. And so he didn't have a spring ball to get ready for it. You know, he had to kind of ease himself into it this camp and has done an amazing job preparing himself. Well, we appreciate you, Josh. Uh, thanks for doing this today and appreciate the media being a part of it. And we'll uh, see you later on. Yeah, thank, thank everyone for being on here and uh, continue to be safe and healthy and stay positive, test negative. All right. Thanks, Josh. Thanks, thank you all. Josh. Thanks. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> Angelique, your line's getting permanently muted.
You guys all have a great day. You too. You too. Thanks, Dave.